barrel roll. Welcome in everybody to another episode of Pengi's Podcast. Today we are talking space games and I guess by proxy most likely space media but I would also wager mostly elite because we have two lovely guests with us today. We have the lovely Nikki Dangerous. Hello. We also have the lovely Katie Chaos. All right. And as always we've got Scruff. He's being here being my chaperone so I don't get distracted because I'm good at that. Oh god I'm back again. I mean hi. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome in guys nikki your second time katie your first time and scruff your every time mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> right where to jump in i guess let's let's start with what was your let's go right to the deep end what was your uh, first introduction to space games oh wow um funnily enough it connect, <laughs> connects to a certain game um first space game back in 1984 when i was about 13 it was this game called elite <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> on my ZX Spectrum, um, if with 48K with what about eight colors or something like that, mm -hmm. and wireframe graphics, and here I am in 2024 playing Elite. <laughs> Still the same one from the MX Spectrum, or <laughs> occasionally, to be honest, yeah. And you can sort of get that version off uh, Frontier's website for now. Um, but yeah, um, where it's come now is obviously completely different. You can play in VR now. I mean, you know, nothing like it was back then. It's it's now the game that I always dreamed it would be. You know, I mean, it's still has its issues at times, but it's it's amazing to see where it is to what I was playing as a thirteen year old in, in my bedroom on my rubber keyed Spectrum. <laughs> Brilliant. Nikki, same question. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, it's it's reasonably similar. My uh, my father-in-law had an A-Corn uh, a Electron, which was sort of like a baby BBC Micro. And uh, yeah, I remember him playing it. So again, you know, sort of first real introduction to space games was Elite, which is, you know, again, it seems odd, but then it's 40 years old. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's going to affect a lot of people, I think. But that's, I'll be honest, that's wild to me that it's 40 years old. Uh, 40 years old, let's try that with weather words. Scruff was actually showing me before we started this slight deviation. We will bring you in, Scruff, don't worry, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but yeah, when, when Scruff was saying the first one came out in 1984, I was like, that's 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 wild to me that it's actually this series is that old i mean like you expect it from stuff like zelda or final fantasy but i genuinely didn't realize that it was that old i think it was because it it was a game that was way ahead of its time you know it, it had these galaxies that had i think it was about 256 sort of different systems in each galaxy and you had about eight different galaxies that you could do in for that on a, a, a little tiny home computer was unheard of and you know, it let people escape, and you'll find a lot of the lot of the people who still play it now are that original generation. If I go to any sort of elite social type things, the the average age, to be honest, is of people in their forties and fifties, probably and above. And uh, back to this, gruffly. Okay, was yeah. Your I was going to say I do remember Elite on the Amstrad. Um, we had an Amstrad at home, and I remember my dad bringing home this game. I thought. This looks, it was these, these, these wireframe space stations. I never played it myself. My first game was a very similar looking game. It was the Star Wars arcade game. I don't remember that, the original one. The old green and green line one. Oh, Doing is it. that the one with the trench run? Yeah, it? the trench run, yeah. Oh, I um, love that. Yeah. I think I played that. Um, this is clearly all before my time at this point. Um, <laughs> I'm the baby of the podcast today. <laughs> The, uh, yeah, I think, um, I mean, like what you say about wireframes, the closest thing I had, and it w wasn't even wireframes, the, the closest or the first memory I can think of was um, Staff Box on the NS, uh, NES, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, SNES, sorry. SNES, yeah. Yeah, because there was no way that would have run on that. No, um, yeah. <laughs> and okay, it wasn't, it wasn't wireframes, but it was definitely polygons. Mm -hmm. All the polygons. Wasn't there a special chip in that cartridge as well, just for that game? There Force, was, yes. Force FX chip or something, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've, I'm, I could be wrong, but I think the, the, the chip itself actually has... I'm sure, I remember reading somewhere, it's either it was named after Star Fox, or there's, the, it's got the symbol of Star Fox on the chip, mm -hmm. I believe. Wow. And but... I'm pretty sure they used it in F-Zero as well, because they realised they could utilise that. I just didn't remember everybody making a big deal about the, the fact that you were all making, making out that, oh, this game's got its own chip. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the way they would sell, I mean, the way they sell games now, but yeah, there, were, there was this whole big thing. And I remember playing Star Fox as well and playing, I think it was the second one I played. Was it on the N64? Was yes, it? there was an S64. Or it's one further yeah. down, yeah. And that's probably a type of game because it's a bit more arcade and shooty that mm-hmm. didn't always get my... I, I It didn't get me in that way. I, I like... Um, it's the whole sim thing of it, I think, that gets me with space games. It, it's, you know, it's a semi-simulation. That's what draws it's, me into it, the type... Well, the type of space game I'm drawn into, I should say. It's a it's sort of an escapism by realism sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Something that you can completely immerse yourself in. Mm-hmm. I mean, just to be... Uh, I was going to say a stickler. It's not. It's more of an info dumping. Uh, Star Fox on the 64 was actually the third entry. Um, Here we go. There was meant to be Star Fox 2, <laughs> which was actually completed and finished, but they didn't release it because the N64 was right around the corner, so they just didn't release it. Everyone can actually play it now on the... the what's it called? The Switch? On the uh, Switch app. You can go back and play uh, Star Fox 2 now. And you know what? Considering its age and what they did with it, it was really it is, it is a good game and it holds up really well. But um, I personally, I, I really like the arcade nature of them. You know, it's like, oh, you've done one run. It took you, what, an hour? Here, try a different run. Try something else. Go a different route. Did anyone ever play the uh, X-Wing and TIE Fighter games in the... Is it during the 90s? The LucasArts games on the PC? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> they, they were another obsession, to be honest. Mm. TIE Fighter need to remake <laughs> oh yes that had such a oh, yeah, i remember some of those um uh side objectives being atrociously hard so ju- just before a mission structure you, this, this hooded fe- uh, creature hooded figure would come up to you and say if, if, if you want to you know get in the good graces of the emperor emperor do this little thing like, like keep this thing alive or whatever and some of them were just you know, absurdly hard. And I think it's been modded since, and it's been pr- prettied up a little bit. Yes. You know, so there's various versions of that and um, X-Wing, and, and the other one, was it X-Wing versus TIE Fighter? Yeah, there was X-Wing yeah. versus TIE and then there was there was a fourth one? Where it finally allowed you to fly some like the Millennium Falcon, the name escapes you at the moment. Yeah, because that's the one you had to fly the Falcon into yeah. the Death Star, yeah. like in, in the... Um, in the film absolutely zero memories of playing those <laughs> I have absolutely zero memories of it <laughs> but i'm glad i'm glad that everyone else here has had memories of it because then it means you know you guys can memory lane away yeah. and i can sit here and listen to you all and, and live vicariously through you played quite a few different sort of pc based ones i don't know if nikki ever played many other ones apart from sort of elite on the pc wise but there was one called um i war which was really good it, had, it was like a very narrative driven one where you're just part of a crew of a, a small starship and um in the middle of a war and it was really pretty intense but there were a lot of sort of little very very narrative driven um space games on on pc freelancer was a good one as well that i think it was a microsoft one wasn't that didn't that derive from Pri- uh, wing commander privateer or was it like a, a sort of spiritual sequel yeah, it did know you remind me. And then there's the whole range of Wing Commander games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Mark Hamill and... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we, we, we've talked more about uh, Space Sims because clearly everyone... Well, everyone here, I should say, that's gathered um, is definitely into the, the Space Sim crowd of things. Um, and being... Obviously, Elite Dangerous is, is, is a big community. Not one that I... I mean, aside from yourselves... I haven't dabbled within it outside of, you know, on the outside looking in, face up against the glass, nose press, like, ooh, pretty. In, in in terms of what the game does, like, how how do you feel about, like, No Man's Sky? Because I think that's probably the only game I've played that's closest to Elite Dangerous in the way that it's, you know, here's your thing, go. Just go explore, go do things. And obviously, you know, I know that game's naturally grown over the years and it's a completely different beast to what it was at launch. I mean, uh, absolutely i mean yeah that, it's a complete redemption story <laughs> you know the whole no man's sky thing it was it was absolutely it was an absolute mess to be honest when it came out it was nothing like a lot of the you know trailers and everything else that have been fed out, out there but but to be honest you know it's it's getting on now i can't think how long it's been out but they're still putting out these constant updates and still adding to that game and it's really good content you know it yeah, they just made that something 
and just wonderful, but it doesn't have the um the community that elite dangerous does <laughs> it's um it's a, it's a different game in a lot of other ways so it's still space exploration it feels a bit more i don't know um i mean both games can get very grindy but i don't know it doesn't seem to have much of a i don't know the story doesn't come through you know you've got to discover a lot of it as you're going through there elite dangerous is a lot more i don't know what, what did they say blaze your own trail was the um tagline they used i think it was originally with elite dangerous you know you've got a whole whole real milky way to explore yeah nicky do you have any thoughts on uh no man's sky or you'd like to share um i must admit no man's sky for me was um the the art style was a, a you know and it's a purely personal thing um but it just looks too much like a cartoon for me <laughs> so you, you never intended to give it a try or no i took one i watched somebody playing it when it first came out and it yeah it was an instant turn off <laughs> see to me that well, that was almost my instant draw um but then you know I'm, I'm i'm known to enjoy quirky games i guess but playing it almost felt like a saturday morning cartoon space exploration and yeah. like i was like the idea of that i was like yeah yeah okay i'm in for this that sounds fun and i'm think because uh, as you said about how long it's been out i'm pretty sure i want to say it's been 2016 or 2018 no man's sky has been out for no yeah. way. It's been a fair <laughs> couple of years. It was definitely in the between the 16 and 18 mark, I'm sure of it. But uh, there's a new update. I think it's it's either just released or it's being finished up. But the uh, next update is called uh, Beyond One, I think it is. So we're going to get part two at some point. Yeah, it was just about, was it last week or the week before? And then they put loads of drops out to go with mm -hmm. that, you know, on Twitch. So people of course. Were, were following that. But yeah, it, it's a really good good game. But it's, it is different, you know, in the, in the ways that Nikki said as well. A lot of people have been sometimes put off by that. That's why I, I, it hasn't got my heart like Elite Dangerous has because Elite Dangerous has got that different look to it, you yeah. know. You know, that's, that's, I mean, it's perfectly valid. We, we've actually said it quite a few times over the various episodes we've done. Like, everyone has their own preference. Uh, sometimes people do prefer the graphical and the visual look of a game before the gameplay. Sometimes it's the reverse. Me, I if it, if it catches me, it catches me. I'll be honest. Like, you can give me a really pretty game, but you can also give me something that's nothing but 2D pixel art. And if the gameplay and story is better, I'll probably play the 2D pixel art more. But again, yeah. it's all down to personal taste, so... Oh, this is it. And and it's what you do with the games yourself. You know, if you've got a game that's got that much, you can, you know, it's that sort of playable. You can do so many different things in it. I mean, you show me like six different Elite Dangerous um, players and they'll all play it in a completely different way. You'll get people like me who like to do lots of sort of exploration stuff and run missions on it. And you'll get people like <laughs> Nikki who run complete and utter chaos <laughs> i'm glad you said it because i was thinking it <laughs> <laughs> oh um yeah and i i love nikki streams they're so entertaining i they mean are. that's that's how i found to be honest i found a lot of the community through and i didn't even know elite dangerous was something that people played on twitch and when i started finding streamers on there i thought oh I could do this and uh, Nikki was one of the first people I used to watch on there it was Nikki and Psychic and I thought this is this is amazing this is just bonkers it's great <laughs> I mean I must admit there's been a few times where I've been in the Nikki stream watching the chaos unfold and I'm like this looks really fun this looks right up my alley however then it's like look at all the space inside and it's like you have to watch your meters and I'm like oh no I just want the chaos bits <laughs> we have the chaosy bits <laughs> And weirdly, it kind of puts me off the space sim side. Yeah, I mean, for me, the appeal of Elite is you can literally play any way you like, um, and it's not detrimental to your experience. Um, you know, you don't have to grind if you don't want to. You don't have, you know, you don't have to go exploring. You know, I still have not done any on foot exobiology so you know that's still there for me to do as a whole side of the game i'm not even touched but uh yeah it, it, it's it's yeah i mean it, it for me it, it definitely sort of ticks all the boxes uh, when i first started it was uh, i think i joined uh, during the early access on the xbox and i i just became a space trucker i was literally just <laughs> selling buying from one station selling for the next and that's all i did 
and I, I, I was just enjoying myself, you know, just chilling out. And so, yeah, we play it completely differently. Yeah, it's yeah. space yeah. trucking. Mm. I mean, in the same vein, that's effectively what me and my friend did with um, No Man's Sky. I know it's the slightly lesser cousin of Elite Dangerous, let's say, um, to some people. But, you know, again, me and him, we played it totally different. He was sitting there going down to every planet. He was scanning everything he could find. I'd run down, get my material, see what I found, get bored, go to another space uh, port, see what upgrades I can get. Go down, see what else I can bully and murder and break into. Um, and there's whole um, in-game communities that spring up around these activities. So mm -hmm. there's the Hutton truckers who are a bunch of like people in game who join together and do like space trucking, cargo hauling yeah. things. Um, there are there's like cannon that do all the the sciency stuff that will go on and like try and research the proper science <laughs> behind some of it as well. You know, and, and find all the discoveries out there. There are people who will go off scanning amusingly shaped vegetables there is so many different things you can do in game uh it, it's that that you know keeps it going there's one guy there's a commander picard who's literally been out of what they call the bubble so out of un uninhabited space literally for years on this expedition um wow. just mapping and scanning and mapping and, and doesn't interact with any other place because they're so far out there in what they call the black that you know it'd take them all those years to get back again yeah. i mean I, I remember the being told about a uh there's one clan that just rescues ships that you run out of fuel i can't remember the name of them um the fuel rats the fuel rats that's it yeah <laughs> yeah i i remember them because one time I, I was explaining how i was doing a run and i just ran out of fuel because I, I i had this route with no stations they were like what are you call fuel rats i'm like didn't know about them <laughs> didn't know about them so i just i just accepted my cold fate <laughs> as, a, as the engine and the lights turned off <laughs> and there's a, there um the hull seals as well which are a similar thing they'll come and fix your hull i mean there's racing communities the buckyball mm -hmm. racing club and there's people who go and do um you know different sort of challenges in game and yeah it's there's such a wide range mm -hmm. of stuff i can go on a lot about elite <laughs> Well, it's it, it, it evolved from what it was when it launched back in, I think, was it 2014? It had its 1.0 launch, which makes the game 10 years old. It just worked that mad. Uh, uh, so it, it, it has evolved so much, maybe in response to other games that were promising things. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we all know which We'd ones. We didn't have an S in a C. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, awesome. originally... We, I re we our commander. I think, I think it was didn't even have a face, did they? They were just black suit, weren't they? With a helmet, originally, originally, way back in the day. Um, but over time, you you got to evolve your character. You got to ch your, um, customize your look, your appearance. You had on foot missions. You had on. I I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it took a while for us to be able to land on planets. I believe that wasn't in on a uh, base game. So yeah, it, it, it has evolved and continuing to evolve as far as I'm aware, despite breaking the game occasionally. <laughs> I mean, what modern games now, when they release an update, don't break the game mm -hmm. immediately when it's updated? <laughs> There's so many of those. Yeah, you know, um, release days when you you know you're not going to... It's pointless booking a day off because yeah. you're never going to get able to play it properly because no. of the service. <laughs> um yeah, and, and that's the same with a lot of these space games as well. If there's a new update out, you know the servers are going to be absolutely clogged on update day um, because everyone wants it. But yeah, um, like a lot of games, I mean, Elite's had its sort of ups and downs, but you know, it seems to be in a pretty good place at the mm -hmm. moment. You know, mm -hmm. there's, they're putting out lots of regular sort of new content. You know, there's been this whole sort of alien war going on in the background, which actually got a lot of people really engaged with it again and then they they've tweaked some of the difficulty to try and get more players in you know engaged and it seems to have worked i mean there's some you know been some great stuff there was um some of the in-game events where i've never seen so many people all in the same instance in game watching something happen in front of them it's just been amazing you know um and you, the type of thing you get in Final Fantasy XIV or something like that, you don't tend to get it many with 
much with the online space games because let's face it i mean star citizen you can't really still have that many people in an instance on it online shall we shall we shall we rip the band-aid off and go have any, any of you ever thought about remortgaging your house and joining the star citizen <laughs> bandwagon nicky you've done star citizen as well haven't you? Yeah, i mean i've I done mean, it I've... but i know you had certain experiences when uh you know again it's it's I, I think, you know, it looks beautiful. Um, I love the fact that, you know, you can stow away on other people's ships. You can mm -hmm. steal ships. Um, but, unfortunately, I think at the moment it's only got three, two, three star systems, if I remember rightly. Wow. So, again, it's once you, you know, you get to that point where you can look around and say, wow, isn't this wonderful for only so long? before yeah and you know yeah i i, I you know I, I definitely have a soft spot for it but yeah it, it's um it's not you know again it, it's a lot of these things you know like um was it starfield you know with all the big blurb mm -hmm. that came out mm -hmm. over that and i think you know one of their big things was over a thousand you know um planets, planets yeah. to, to, to roam and instantly at that point i'm like well i've already got the entire mm -hmm. milky way so why only a thousand mm -hmm. and yeah i think that's i don't know you know obviously you know i you know i've got nothing against um any other space game you know everyone has you know different wants out of games um you know the whole like you know this latest thing of you know buy to win where you know you can rather than sort of grinding your way through to upgrade stuff uh you can just buy a pre-configured version i mm -hmm. think that's awesome because you know for the people who don't want to do the grind then that's a great option it brings more people into the game who maybe would have gone oh well you know i don't want to spend hours just getting to the point where i'm going to start enjoying it um you know i think a lot of people are looking you know say it, it, it's it yeah for me it's it you know it, it, it ticks all the boxes mm -hmm. is it just a lack of con uh, content right in, in star citizen just yeah think. um yeah you know what it, it's not yeah it's not just that in fact it might still only be one star system in it but they were talking about other ones that they were bringing in but the delays come up and it like nikki said it's an absolutely beautiful game and some of the planets on there they they look unbelievably good you know from the wind effects to just everything on it looks like something else but uh every time there's an update I'll, I'll jump back into it and i'll play it for about half an hour and it's great and i'm having great fun and then i walk through a lift and i drop through the floor <laughs> and it's like <laughs> And I'm like, oh, God, here more. we go. We're back. <laughs> There's some real basic stuff that oh. is still not right. Oh. Um, and it just constantly, it it promises so much. And it, it, it's got so much potential. But there's so much that really basic that's still not fixed. Mm. It's like they're, it feels like they're overreaching, you know, instead of just getting the basics sorted first and then expanding to the other stuff. Yeah. But, they're running before they yeah. can walk. Yeah, um, but I'll always keep an eye on it because mm -hmm. if it comes off and it does get to that point where it ever gets out of alpha, um, <laughs> it it might be really an amazing game, but it still won't ever be elite. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you said when it comes out of alpha because I was sat here wondering if that had actually released and I'd missed that. So I remember it's been it's been what ten years in the making now or something that like that. Yeah, and it's. I think it is probably the most expensive game ever as far yeah. as the money that's been invested in it. I think the last thing I saw about it was that, that there was these secret shops that only opened when you spent so much money in the game. Goodness. It's, yeah, it's, it's like that there, there are secret store pages that uh, if, if you spend $10,000, here's a store page. It's like, oh my God, why? <laughs> why? Oh, and and all this coming from the guy who brought us Wing Command. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a shame that he clearly has a plan. He kind of knows what he's doing to a point, but also sounds like he doesn't. 
and this is i mean i don't know because i've not looked into it properly but just just from hearing what you guys have been saying anyway yeah it, it'll be, it'll be good if it gets there you know and uh, it just feels like a very expensive demo <laughs> um but but we'll see and, and you know there are there's lots of other different types of space games like nikki was just talking about um starfield which you know i jumped in when i saw that but ooh, you know and there are these thousands of planets but you know what there's not much on some of them but that's that's a good game for the sort of just playing the narrative it gets a bit repetitive it's skyrim in space you know but it's um it's another space game isn't it <laughs> oh, i'm gonna have to scream you oh, i i reviewed that game and it is not i mean on paper, yes, it's Skyrim in space, but it's narratively, it is. I, I have so many problems with that game. I, oh, it hasn't got the longevity of <laughs> no, Skyrim because I'm still playing hasn't. Skyrim and I'm not playing Starfield uh, anymore. It, it, it is pace. The narrative is paced so badly that a lot of the plants are just copy paste. It's like, oh my god! And the um, so, uh, what, what the creation engine they use is not suited for space games. Because Sarah Morgan the, does not like that. <laughs> Yeah. No, so the creation engine has this massive issue with cells, uh, where the overworld is a cell. You, you change cell, it's a loading screen. So you go into your ship, a loading screen. You go to space, loading screen. Warp into the system, loading screen. <laughs> and it's like, oh, and then, well, no, you can bypass what You can just fast travel and fight your bin to it. Why is the space bit here? <laughs> you just removed one of your selling points of the game. It's like, uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I could rant about Starfield for hours. And, oh, um, <laughs> yeah, landing uh, basically the landing on planets being like an automated thing. That yeah, just that hacked me right off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, 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 when they first announced it, I did think, oh, that could be a good thing. Because how, how many times have I failed a landing in a late? How many times have I failed a landing in in, in a No Man's Sky? It's like well, if it cuts that out, I'm like uh, maybe, maybe. But the way I tried it, it's like oh, to be nah. fair, my landing in No Man's Sky is just me barreling towards the planet yeah. at full speed and i'm like i'm near the ground i should probably pull up i should probably pull up <laughs> i'll hit the ground it's like bang, just you know bounce off the ground and it's like probably should have pulled up sooner mm -hmm. you want to see somebody <laughs> land the ship you watch nikki with full landing shield on i have and it's, it, it, it is a thing of beauty <laughs> <laughs> they don't seem to do much though for poor nikki the shields anyway <laughs> <sighs> Can't sadly much better because I feel like I'll be exactly the same. Yeah, and no, I was just thinking of going back. Obviously, you know, we, we naturally we touched on No Man's Sky a little bit. Uh, definitely went more for Lily Dangerous route, which I kind of had a feeling we would. I won't lie. <laughs> um, but you earlier on, you said about how No Man's Sky at launch was broken. I mean, personally really enjoyed it at launch. <laughs> I spent a good sort of 30 plus hours with it at launch, if not more. Yeah. And honestly, like all the people that were sitting there complaining and saying, nope, this is bad, this this is broken. I'm honestly reading these reviews and just playing it like, well, I've, I've experienced none of this. I don't I don't see why everyone's getting so angry. I don't, you know, think it was, I don't think it was as much as it was broken, but it was just missing a heck of a lot <laughs> that was shown in the trailers. It was like, you know, when they did Watch Dogs years ago, a completely different thing of game where they put all those amazing looking sort mm. of trailers for it and then the graphics were nothing like that mm. um it was it was just missing a lot of the sort of content from it the worlds were there and everything and yeah you could play it but it it was a lot emptier than you know he was originally um promising but they got there with it and you know i love it's got like mechs and everything in it now mm -hmm. it's brilliant i mean i won't lie i'll, I'll completely agree it was empty um, as much as I enjoyed it, there was some times I was like, well, what the hell is even down here? A few well, new materials? Cool, okay. Bye. Well, Off I go. <laughs> Back into space. To be honest, uh, then, no, Man, no Man's Sky was a, a mismanagement of um, uh, hype. It, it was a mismanagement of hype. They put the wrong person to to sell that game. They put the head of the, the, the head of the, you know, the director of the game to sell it. And if you look at his body, I, I mean, I'm, I'm stealing this from somewhere else, but if, if you look at his body language during all his interviews, he's a nervous. He's a nervous boy. He's a nervous boy. So you know, whenever someone asks him a question, his true answer would have been yes, eventually. But instead, he just said yes. You know, so everyone's expecting all these things at launch. No, nope, they weren't ready. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, like as you say, if, if they'd have announced it during the, I guess, like. I guess announcements and the updates that they kept giving. If they said this will be in the game eventually, we're going to roll it out 
so the game will grow as you play. Mm -hmm. You know, if they'd have just said the game will grow as you play, like alone, that would have fixed 90% of people's quibbles, I yeah. personally think. Could be wrong, people might still have hated it, but mm -hmm. for me, it was always like, I, I haven't played it properly for about five years, maybe. And I'll be honest with you, it's been free. Every, they've not, yeah, asked, yeah. They've not asked for anything more outside of the entrance price. And you know, I've I've got full respect for them for that. Yeah, they, they even had, they even had an option. That there is this like gold currency you can only get from doing certain missions. You can't buy that because it's it's it is, and it is just for cosmetic stuff. But you know, you, you can't actually. There's, there's still no microtransactions where they could have easily put microtransactions in it. So I'm I'm gonna praise them for that. But they've definitely got a lot of things right. Did they announce it at the wrong time? Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> Did they not announce things that were happening? Also, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or at least not happening yet, I should say, because yeah. they eventually got there, just yeah. not immediately. All right, there's there's another title that keeps popping up. Um, I don't know how, how many people have played it, or you've definitely heard of it. What about Eve Online? <gasps> Does anyone oh. have any experience with that? Yeah, I'm going to give it you know, the title that everyone else normally gives it. Spreadsheets in Space. Yes! <laughs> That's what came to my head as well. <laughs> Spreadsheets in Space. <laughs> I have played it, but I, I only dipped into it. It didn't pull me in because it was, you know, it, I, I got a little bit swallowed up by the amount of sort of stats and this and that. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot more, the subscription model with it, I didn't like. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't want to, something I was going to be paying money for much. Mm -hmm. I, I do enjoy so, reading the stories about that, the, the some, some of the dramas that went on in that game. It was some clans like you know just the being robbed of all their stuff or whatever you know it's like how is this possible <laughs> it's like oh my god this is like some real real corporate corporate espionage espionage going on is that the game where some dude completely betrayed like his entire clan and stole yes. something in the millions yes of like in world currency or not in world so like actual world currency from the game or something uh that. well he, he stole millions of dollars worth of like in-game assets yes oh okay like, like ships which you can sell on in theory you know yeah it seems to it seems to have a reputation for having a bit more toxicity <laughs> 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 um, which again i mean it doesn't exist in games no. it does exist in games like elite but not as much you know you, Get people who gank, you know, basically turn up and blow somebody's ship up in PvP type stuff. But uh, people don't always have to play in PvP. Nope. But um, with, uh, yeah, with uh, the spreadsheet game. See, I even <laughs> forgot what it was called then. The spreadsheet game. It just it didn't draw me in and doesn't hold me, even though occasionally we'll dip into it. I don't know. If, have you ever used that, Nicky? No, no, I haven't. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, what's the other one that comes to mind? Oh, the Expanse um, Telltale game was good as well. Now, yeah. I'd love to see a space, a good like space sim done around the Expanse. Apart from the fact that because it's done in real time, you'd be months between you know different planets because a lot of it <laughs> takes place within the solar system. But I'd love to see like some first person games or some other sort of games around based around the expanse that'd be good i mean this this goes more towards the the arcadey side of things um but again it, it's still i guess in essence almost a, it's not a flight so actually at all is it no okay it's definitely more of an arcade um e type affair but did any of you play starlink battle for atlas or search for atlas whichever one it was called that was the one that came is that the one that had a nintendo switch version that you could get a star fox ship in we, yeah yeah that's oh. the one I remember, I remember that. That's one of those. It was during the time when it was like a, they they were like having toys with games. You could build your ship and place it on the amiibo thing, and it appearing game with it. That's the one. Yes, uh, but they because obviously that was, you know, they they had the um, what was it? They had the Disney one, then they had the uh, Skylanders one. Skylanders. And then this yeah. was effectively, it felt like it was going to be the same thing, except they did yeah. something a little different. So yeah, you could go out and buy, um, these toys and just have a amalgamation of toys. Or you could just download the digital copy of it. Mm -hmm. Never have to mess around with an amiibo, yeah. a toy, whatever. Just go into your inventory, bosh, 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 done. I think that. So what it was I saw, I saw that amiibo start thing. I was like, yep, nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought it, um, I don't know, probably about a year, maybe a year after launch, and it was on sale for about £5 in the Switch store. So I was yeah. like, you know what? 
I'm getting it on the Switch because I know the Switch has the Star Fox exclusivity content. Uh, so I was just flying around the game in Foxy's ship or one of the base game ships. Um, Quite honestly, again, like, I have never played it. <laughs> no, no, it's it's really fun. I mean, if you enjoy if you enjoy Star Fox games, it's definitely worth a look because you've got your various planets you can go to. You can you you do have access to fast travel, but you can literally keep in mind this is still on the Switch. It's on over the consoles as well, but Switch is definitely the definitive one. You can go from planet surface to space, no load screens. You just up you go into space, you're off. You can explore derelict um, like stations that are floating around. You literally stay in your ship the entire game. You never get out of it unless it's a cutscene. But the exclusively gameplay is in ship. You like go into outposts, take them down. You know, fight big freighters in space, dog fights. But yeah, like you know, you go from ground to planet, uh, ground to planet, ground to space. Sorry. And again, when you're in space, you can just go into the planet, a la like you know, No Man's Sky, and just you know, cruise down to the ground and. You can fly around the planet or you'll set at like a hover level on the planet so you can just sort of effectively drive on it but you know still be in the air but no it's 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 a good time talking yeah. to the switch though it impressed me that you can that no man's sky runs on on the switch they got yeah. they put a version of it on there because because i ended up getting that i've got it in about four different formats i've got to <laughs> say but you know um you can play it on a steam deck fair enough and i've got elite dangerous on a steam deck but like no man's sky on a switch that i thought was like wow <laughs> there's some black magic going on there nintendo have like sacrificed the goat or something to get that running on the switch which is amazing it, yeah i can sit on the train and, and play no man's <laughs> sky it's great so there's a couple of games uh i meant to mention before these are roguelikes uh so ftl do you ever play ftl yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's one I can lose myself in and get slightly obsessed with. That's why I've got to... I don't play it much because I get a bit too obsessed with it. It, it, it does feel like you're, you're the captain of a starship for that one. So like you got to make all these this ter terrible or, or, you know, not terrible, but, you know, defining this, this decisions sometimes. <laughs> do you... That, that your, your opponent surrender? Do you let them go? Or do you... you know, it's like, oh, do you accept the new crewmate? Do, do you just rush to the exit to try and get it as far as you can? It's like, yeah, it does make you feel like a starship captain from the old Trek days. The, um, oh God, bridge crews are really good. I'm talking mm. about Star Trek captains. Oh, yes. I love that one. <laughs> if you've got a, a team of friends and you're playing that, it's yes. brilliant. It's so much fun. We need to sit down and play. I think three out of four of us here are bridge, bridge crew. <laughs> just just uh, talking about FTM reminded me of a really obscure DS game, I'm not going to lie to you, it's anime as all hell. Uh, it's called Infinite Space. Ooh. The, there is, it's, the reason it obviously reminded me was very much of the Fast and Light kind of thing, and I guess a little bit of Eve. So again, like the, the whole game is done within starships, and you literally go around the galaxy, and it's all tactical gameplay and stuff, but you, you know, you manage your ship, and your crew, and your weapons, etc, etc. Impressively uh, looking graphically, because again, this was running on a DS. And... Wow. It shouldn't look as good as it does, honestly. Not even the 3DS. We're talking the old school original DS as wow. well. But yeah, if you look at some pictures on Google, it's mad. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's a really good time. It was one of those that caught me off guard when I picked it up. I was, you know, like, oh, okay, well, an anime game, I'm in. Let me have a look. <laughs> yeah, you've got like a little bit of... You can even fly the ship a little bit as well. As you know, as well as just go point A, point B. You get to sort of fly it a little bit, sit in the cockpit. It's, yeah, worth a look. Probably don't buy it off someone on eBay. Because it's <laughs> wild prices. How about Everspace? Did anyone ever took that? <laughs> yeah, but... I'm going to have to Google it, because I don't know. <laughs> it, it was all right. I didn't bother with the second one, but I played the first one yeah. because I thought oh, it looks just more of the same, to be honest. It did. It was... Uh, that was my takeaway from it as well. But it's like, and plus, narratively-wise, like, how does this work? We've pretty much got a completed story in the first one. <laughs> you know, look, looking at it, graphic, or at least just looking at screenshots, it reminds me a lot of Chorus. That, that was the other game I was going to mention, Chorus. That has been on my radar for a while, Chorus. And I'm like, it is very good. Yeah. It's the, if you'd like to know more, in the TYG magazine somewhere, I wrote a review for that. Oh, it's did you? fantastic. Yes, I I've really enjoyed it. I've got a copy it. of that, but never played it. I need to probably have a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> the one, funny enough, the one thing I will say, because it's you know, the gameplay—it's not just your 
you're on rail shooting, you can literally spin upside down and fight things if you really desire. But in a weird way, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of almost link that back to Starlink because they're very similar in terms of here's your thing, go explore, you don't ever leave your ship, and it's all, you know, ship fighting and dog fights and stuff. It's really, really good fun. Really good story as well. And graphically, my gosh! Beautiful. Because <laughs> uh, one of, the, one of the, the opening cutscene of how, you know, the main character gets acclimated to the ship and stuff visually absolutely stunning and it doesn't let up it continues that like, even when everything's bombarding you with various explosions and lasers and colors coming from all directions it it's just so pretty and now that i've seen everspace this might have to go on my wish list because uh, this looks very similar oh, yeah i wouldn't get the second one because i think it was fairly overpriced as well mm. <laughs> what i remember okay well lovely talking about space and stuff and just like space we also We'll have to leave and explore the real life and do our real life things so okay so for anyone that's coming into space games and looking at you know space simi type things what would be the one that you would recommend to newcomers of the genre and why is it elite <laughs> um it's elite because there is no other <laughs> yeah. um uh you it's know not, yeah. sorry to Go interrupt on, but yeah i was gonna say it's not you know, it's not outrageously expensive. It's quite often on sale. And, yeah, you know, when I saw people dropping £50 sterling for um, Starfield, it, yeah, really made me cry. So, yeah, it, you know, it's again, it's, it's people are going to be, ha well, not haters, but, you know, we have banged on about it, but there is a reason why we bang on about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's, the base game is like a five or sometimes on Steam. You know, it's it's ridiculously cheap and amazingly good value, so, yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. Delete, it, it, it's, it's, the, it's the galactic sandbox, at least you can do what you want on it. So, yeah, it's, it's elite, so... You want to live out your, your Star Trek fantasy, or your your X-wing fantasy, or Star Wars? Yeah, delete, delete there. So you yeah. wouldn't even recommend, like, even if it went on sale, for example, you wouldn't even say mm, maybe give uh, um, uh, No Man's Sky a look in, though. I mean, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. It, yeah no, could... it's a, that's a tough one. Yeah, actually, because you could play No Man's Sky, you could give it a look in if it's cheap enough, and then realise that Elite is far better than it, and you go back and play Elite. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't even argue. That's a yeah. that's an interesting rebuttal. <laughs> it's a pretty good rebuttal. Come to the elite <laughs> side. You know it's the only way. <laughs> you sound like you're trying to convert the viewers here. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and and then you know go online and watch some elite streamers online and yeah. you know. There's me, who's an elite streamer, as is Nicky. Um, you know, I was just about to say, funny enough, that does lead us into the finale of Where Can We Find You Lovely Folks? We'll start with Katie. Um, yeah, twitch.tv forward slash Katie Chaos. Oh, K K Katie and the Chaos with Ks, because, yeah, I'm a pain in the bum like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm also on that X tweety whatever you call it thing and it's like chaos gaming nine i think on there because i couldn't find a decent tag um you know they <laughs> musk may have changed the name but it is forever here twitter yeah <laughs> so don't worry about that at all it's forever twitter to us <laughs> but that's me yeah <laughs> and our lovely nicky noodle what about yourself Again, www.twitch.tv forward slash Nikki underscore dangerous. She sure is that. <laughs> and like we've already said, if you like interesting, different content for how two people can play the same game, definitely give both of them a look. Mm -hmm. Because one's filled with chaos and filth, and the other actually <laughs> kind of plays the game. So. <laughs> we'll let you decide which one's which. Uh, uh, and our lovely Scruffy, whereabouts can we find you? Good uh, sir? Yeah, I'm on Twitch at Scruff underscore XD. Uh, my work is on the uh, TYG YouTube. I write the TYG website. Yep, yeah, that's me. Peggy, where can of we course. find you? <laughs> where can we find me? Nowhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As always, I've been the host for this podcast episode. You can find me over on Twitch as Angry Penguin J. 
I feel like it's all one word. I can never remember. But you'll find me. Usually the filth side of uh, Twitch. Sometimes humorous games, sometimes puzzle games. Who knows? Uh, I also do some writing on the uh, TYG website. And also I'm um, part of making the content for YouTube, such as this video right here that you are hearing. Um, as always, thank you to everyone that has come along today. Thank you. And make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Was the next phrase I was going to say? Yes, thank you. I'm not going to say it because you've just have, okay. and we're going to keep it in. Okay. <laughs> Until next time, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye.